Sometimes use the holder as well for if I'm painting from a, a, a picture. I sometimes use the iPad holder, but more often it's just to record things. What's the black one? That's the microphone. Hopefully it's working. Welcome back. Step two. I'm just going to do really something small here now. Um, <clears throat> Unless there's a particular, I mean, might, might try and do a little bit more of, just to kind of complete that flower or to begin this yellow one. Um, in fact, sometimes it's good like with watercolour to pace yourself. You know how you can't work over, if you want to get clarity with watercolour, you can't, can't really work over an area that's wet. So in a way, what I could do here is something similar, where I put on something for the base of that flower and let it dry but I work down here, you know, because acrylic does dry really quickly, especially if it's thinly applied. And it's just that there's a chrysanthemum there that has, that's not been established at all yet. And I've got this now on the heel of my hand, and I suppose I could put a touch where the other chrysanthemum might be located as well, as I think about there. It's fine over the white, isn't it? But you could always do the thing that um, I was suggesting yesterday, if it's hard to work over the green, you could possibly paint, you know, you could paint a layer of white underneath and start again with it. But I think actually it's okay to have to grapple a bit to get the brights and darks. So I've just stuck those on there as a way of saying to myself, though that's the location. Um, and I'm going to ignore it then and go down and try and do something in the vase again. But there's one, two, and then there's a third one here. And it's especially bright at the top. I mean, it might need a little bit of white into it even. And this is lemon yellow, is it? No, it's cadmium. So maybe the lemon yellow is what's needed in that spot there. <clears throat> I didn't plan on doing on the painting with my hands, actually. It's just happened that way there. I think like Helen was doing the chrysant the gerbera with her fingers, and it feels like that's often a good um, way, isn't it? Do you use your hands quite a bit? Yeah. Um, maybe, I don't know if acrylic is how it affects the skin, but anyway, um, it's okay. Yeah, so I thought maybe some of that light might be better represented with some uh, yellow, lemon yellow in relief. Little channels of it. Like I was saying about Rembrandt's paintings, you know, the nose is so thick you could almost lift the painting up by the nose because the light areas are painted thickly. Um, I always remember that so that I kind of put on something flattish for the darks. I mean, as a kind of a general rule. And then touching the lights can it can really pick up the bright the brightest the brightness of the lights. Just looking again now that I see the light there. I'm looking over here, and actually all of that is fairly muted really. And it's really only the the top bits that are um, in any way that are brighter. So you can see an example here now of deciding to do one thing and then heading off in another direction. It happens, doesn't it, in painting? And I think it's quite a nice thing to let it happen, just to kind of have a way in. And then, yeah, like, it's good to just step in. And that's all sometimes that's needed, I think, like, that you can go off in a different... But I do want to establish something for the bottom of the pot, and then I'll stop because I want you to get started, Claire. So I'm sure you do yourself. Claire does lovely work with them. Um, big sweeping gestural mark making, that's my memory. You don't have to do that today, no. <laughs> you can stand here and do a tiny painting. That's terrible to set you up like that. Okay, what I want to do is, I'm gonna use one of these bits that I gave you actually to mask off the shape of the pot because um, I want to, be able to freely put on something to represent the shadows as the flash turns under itself there. <coughs> kind of a vague masking off. Maybe a little bit of blue in there for the bit at the bottom. Yeah, I was saying to Rona and um, I want to work away if they want to have seen demonstrations of plenty for me. And maybe you have too, but you're kind of new, so, well, you're not really new, <laughs> but you're, you're, you seem happy enough to say, okay, anyway. Um, and I'm just gonna do that. 
your new is and you can't you can't object even if you want well you can stop it on you okay okay anyway so putting some sort of shadow in there to explain the turning in bit and then there's always the option of putting you know the oil pastel I quite like as a way of defining an edge so when I half close my eyes and there's quite a bright area here actually and then maybe even on the other on the other side or with my non-dominant tend to make draw some of the lights on that daisy and then find some other areas where there are little flashes of brightness um, and it's possible to find other colors or other materials like for example the ink i was talking about earlier i think i know that's the orange this is the red version it's really quite a lovely um it's got a lovely brightness to it and it might be one of those things that would explain the light on the base where something where nothing else will work you know but it, like i'm not doing this time i'm, I'm not standing back or considering really i just want to kind of say what's available in terms of the materials you know and um, so i think probably what i'm doing might be quite ugly but um whereas if i was concentrating to be a masterpiece <laughs> i'll stop with that now um, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, Norma, you were thinking about doing the, the background up to meet. Um, Claire, can I borrow a little bit of masking tape here? Um, you were talking about possibly putting your paint grey background. Um, and you know, you could mix, if you, if you don't have the paint grey, you could just mix um, the ultramarine blue with the burnt umber or any dark brown with the blue. Um, <coughs> And I quite like masking off, like that's not exactly the colour now, but you could work mm -hmm. at it to get the colour you want. And sometimes it's nice too to, um, to do something fairly free and then turn your painting. I did actually have the, I had the bigger brush. I was wanting to make bigger work. Mm. Um, you could turn the painting sideways and let the colour run and drip in a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's something quite um, cathartic about turning your painting on its side or turning it upside down that you see it differently when you come back. It could be that some parts are loose and other parts mm -hmm. you could um, let them kind of be more fluid and some parts could be kind of dry. Mm. And I think you sometimes want to do something and just let it alone and not really um, invest any huge decisions around it, mm -hmm. simply to use it as a platform to keep you moving forward. That like any bold move will give you a bit of courage, I think. Mm. And it causes you to think about mm -hmm. something at the other end than maybe, mm -hmm. or, you know, I, I think that's good medicine to make mm -hmm. yourself risk it, mm -hmm. risk it. Like, which is what I think all of us are always doing, showing up at a blank piece of paper, you know. So, um, all right, I think I'm just going to stop right. there because it feels like right. time is more of the essence than anything else, really. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So thanks, yeah. yeah. That's what happened there. All the best. <laughs>